today is, what is today? I'm losing track of my days already. The 26th? Yeah, <laughs> 26th of February. This entire month has gone by way too fast. So we are about two hours away from Fishhook Lake, which is just south of Park Rapids, Minnesota. And we are up here for the Heartland 200. This was supposed to be a terrain race weekend for us. Um, but there's no snow up here. Go figure. No snow in northern Minnesota. This is very confusing. Um, by now we should have had one terrain race in. We were supposed to go to Manville, North Dakota. And that was canceled due to lack of snow. We were supposed to do the I-500 two weekends ago. And that got canceled due to lack of snow. So the last two weekends we've done some late cross racing in the Osho and Manawa back home. And we're now finally up here for Park Rapids. So they've moved it to the lake location. Obviously being on the ice, it's going to be a lot shorter track. Uh, they just went and followed the track for the last time yesterday. And it looks like it's a little over 12 miles a lap. So my class, I believe, is doing three laps and you're doing four. Yep, four. 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 So the plan is um, we only have one sled with us. We have mine. So we decided just to save money, make sure that we can do some more races. We left Joel's sled back and his is still set up for terrain. So I will compete in sport women's this weekend and Joel is going to run sport stop on my sled. So he gets the really well, yeah. away. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm running that class. I'm yeah. just saying <laughs> the goal is just to not wreck your sled. Yeah. So I gotta ride yes. home. Yes, that, that is the Otherwise number gonna, one goal. You're gonna kill me. Is, yes, don't dump my sled. I will kill you. Um, I unfortunately had a little bit of damage at Manawa. Um, I got run into, but uh, it's still in one piece. Didn't have to do any uh, repairs to it at all. It just just added got, character to it. Yeah, yeah. A little, just bit a, little bit of, a little bit of scarring, you know, it tells a story, right? So yeah, a little little bit of scratch paint, a uh, little bit of plastic damage, nothing's broke or anything, so that's good. Um, so yes, the, the plan is to just not dump my sled. I don't want a broken windshield, I don't want scraped up side panels, I, I don't want anything, just keep them one piece. Um, we made a lot of changes to the sled this week. We added 48 ice picks. I was not happy with the sled at all in Manawa. Yeah. Um, Joel couldn't understand it at all. It's the best I've seen a winner <laughs> in the history yeah. of racing. I mean, it, it was. It was It was pretty bad for, you know, I, I won the women's race, but I was not at all happy with the sled. Uh, it sucked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he only passed the field in like a third of a lap. Yeah. So that wasn't quite good enough. I guess yeah. he just expected to do it in a sixth of a lap. Yeah. Yeah, it, um, yeah, I came off the line in, in last, and I, that pissed me off, so, you know, I just picked him off one by one and got in the lead and held it, but, yeah, I was probably the most pissed off winner you've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't happy with it. I wasn't happy with the traction I was getting. It was easy to steer, it just, I, I had no bite. So, we added 48 ice picks, uh... Other suspension changes. We we changed the springs on the shocks, correct? Yeah, ski shocks. I put some XCR springs on, but they're like old school, 1993 style. Ah, okay, right. I got some. I got some yeah, old they're, parts they're riding shorter, on the new yeah, sled. Yeah, shorter. I painted them black, so they're they not red. Like, yeah, the red would have looked a little off. That would have looked terrible. Paint job's not great, but from a distance, you won't be able to tell other than uh, the shades of red shining through. But. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. I spray painted them twice. <laughs> Got my fingers some too, but 
haven't been painted. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I guess I just won't have to look at them. Yeah, you know, you know, you know I'll see it. <laughs> They're not very good paint job, but it was all the farm paint. That you have? Yes. I mean, you, you really would powder coat stuff. And, but yeah. I just, from a distance, they we may fine. We may do with what we had. Yeah. So, besides that, I don't think there's really anything else we've changed. We are going to put a lovely little zip tie underneath my kill switch, though. Um... For, for racing, we usually like to rotate our kill switches forward or like down to make sure that we don't hit them. Um, I know from personal experience because I did it last year in Hayward on like the third lap of the yeah. final. <laughs> I was running it at Manawa and I thought I was blowing it up. Yep. The third time this year I thought I was blowing a sled up, but it was just either a tether twice and now a kill switch. Yeah. Yeah, so I can live with. it seems like rotating my kill switch forward is still not fixing the issue. I don't want to, I mean, I could I could do a delete and just not have the kill switch, but I really don't want to do that. Um, so basically we're just going to, while kill switch is up, just stick a zip tie underneath the button so that it can't be depressed enough to yeah, have, to kill the, the slide. You have to turn the thing off. Yeah. I do have electric start. By the way, if you own a sled, get one with electric start. You're not going to be sorry. You're never going to want a sled without electric start. Um, so, yeah, between the, the key, the electric start, and the tether, there's three ways to kill it. So, um, usually in my case, it's always the tether that saves me. I've fallen off enough times. You think I'd learned by now, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's going that hard, huh? Apparently. <laughs> So for today, like I said, we're, we're less than two hours away, about an hour and 45 minutes away from the lake. We are going to go out and practice, and I'm really, really excited to go practice today um, because I'm finally going to practice with one of the women. So Jill Hattin, uh, is she races the pro women's class, and she is married to Alex Hattin, who is the grandson of one of the founders of Polaris. Uh, they both actually work for Polaris. And uh, I'm really excited to get out on the ice with her and finally get some mentorship from another woman. Joel has never done a bad job teaching me what I need to know about snowmobiles and, and how to race and everything, but um, we had a really long discussion about this last night in the truck that with with women like me, I know how it feels to be in a male-dominated sport, and a lot of people see us as a powder puff class, and we can't drive as hard or whatever the case may be, or on, you know, these machines that are not built for people that are short like me or my weight class. So um, it's going to be really nice to finally uh, get that, that mentorship from a woman who is doing very well in this male-dominated sport. Um, and she has a lot of experience working on them as well as racing and riding. So, you know, she she knows, you know, suspension setups. And um, I, I'm really excited for her to just look at my, my sled and see um, if she thinks that I should change anything, you know, try to do some laps and have her watch, um, you know, how I enter corners or how the sled's reacting and, and see what she thinks give me some tips and tricks or whatever it is. Um, I have not been on the sled since we've made these traction changes with the picks. That was my, my biggest complaint from last weekend, so it'll be interesting to see how much more bite I have. Um, so I think that's going to be a really big change. So um, I'm going to be turning a lot of laps. Joel's going to be turning laps because he hasn't, he's never raced my sled before. So um, yeah. Yeah, at least on ice form. That is true, because you did you did race my sled up in uh, Dubuque, uh, to, uh, yeah, Dubuque, Iowa, two yeah, years ago. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically the plan for today. So we'll get there, we'll unload, get our race gear on, 
entrance and practice laps, talk to Jill and Alex. Um, we'll be able to text our sled today so that we don't have to do it in the morning, which means I get to sleep in a little bit. Uh, not too much though, because racing kicks off at, I think, nine o'clock. So um, I'm up in round three and Joel is up in round five. So as soon as I get back in for my race and the next, uh, the next round that staging leaves, I can pull right into staging and we will see what happens. But I'm excited. This will be our last ice race. Um, yeah, especially with the traction changes. That's gonna be that's yeah. gonna be a lot of big change for Hopefully me. Hopefully, I can help with some feedback too. Yeah, yeah. So we are racing both days. So it's it's basically the same race Saturday as it is Sunday. So um, we'll yeah. we'll hang around for both days, and then we will head about a little over halfway back home. Sunday night and then had the rest of the way home on Monday just to kind of break it up and make sure Joel doesn't get too tired because he does all the driving because of my narcolepsy so um, should be a good weekend and then after this we are off for an entire month until we head up to White Cap Mountain by Hurley, Wisconsin. We're excited that we get a uh, Wisconsin location that we can do this year. So that is also uh, a two-day event. It's actually a double points weekend, so both both days count as like actual two two separate races, which is nice. Um, so like this weekend, both days are together. And they just take your total time of both days. So, yeah. um, looking forward to being more competitive than I was in um, Iowa. Iowa. Oh, Kaboji. <laughs> oh, We've done this our fourth race now, and it's just three weekends in a row. Like, I can't keep anything straight anymore. But yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to not having as many sleds pass me that was in Okaboji. Um my my uh, my takeaway from Okaboji was I was I've never been passed by more people half my age in my life. Um, my round runs with all of the juniors from ten to seventeen years old and the vintage guys, and I was bad. Um, but I do have to give myself some credit because we came there with a complete trail setup. We did not come with an ice setup at all. So um, I was fighting traction issues the entire day. So yeah, I was slow from that. I couldn't take the corners as fast because I didn't have the traction I wanted. So I do have to give myself a little leeway, but it still sucks when like kids and teenagers are passing you just left and right. Um, and I was one of the very last sleds to come in in my round. So cross fingers, this weekend goes a lot better. Um, I don't know how many women I'm going to be competing against in my class. I had one girl last time. I'm thinking that maybe some of the junior girls will see that that class does not have a lot of people and maybe jumping up. Um, I am still competing for the points championship in that class. So uh, right now, technically, I'm sitting second in points, which I'm happy with. Um, hopefully, I will continue that lead. Um, we are not going to Natawash, Minnesota next weekend, just because we're gonna we're gonna try to do the the double point ski hill race and then whatever the ski hill race is after that. Um, hey, if you want to sponsor us, I got room. We would love to put you on our trailer and on my sled. Let me know. I'll stick you on for next next year if you want. Let me know, please. <laughs> We want to keep doing this, so. All right, sponsor plugs. So we got Kreitziger Drainage, Juno Lanes, Polaris Lubricants, Women in Motorsports Making Waves, Facebook page, Advanced Surveillance Protection, and now I'm forgetting somebody. Who am I forgetting this time? I thought you had them all. Maybe I do. All right. Well, cool. I think I remembered them all this time. That's awesome. All right. We are going to keep driving, and we will see you guys when we are ready to race tomorrow.